Hello, 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 my geometry math people. My name is Maya, and I'm going to be going over question 28 from section 2 of chapter 5, which is located on page 310. And this section is about uh, perpendicular bisectors. So, first of all, words to learn. Uh, so, the first word is equidistant or equidistant. <laughs> and equa means equal, and distance, of course, means like the length of a certain object or whatever you are trying to look at. The second word is perpendicular bisector, which is a segment, ray, line, or plane that is perpendicular to a segment at its midpoint. So basically, right here I have a segment, and this is just an example of it. In order for it to be a perpendicular bisector, it has to make a 90 degree angle always and of course it has to intersect at its midpoint because bisector that means two and you're basically splitting it in half. So, there are approximately three, pure, three theorems in here and these are the first two. So theorem 5.2 states that um, well, which deals with the perpendicular bisector theorem. It states that in a plane, if a point is on the perpendicular bisector of a segment, then it is equidistant from the endpoints of the segment. So basically, if this line CP is a bisector of line segment AB, then CA is going to equal to CB because this is equidistant from each other, so this is going to make this equidistant from each other. And in theorem 5.3, which deals with the converse of the perpendicular bisector theorem, it basically states that in a plane, if a point is equidistant from the endpoints of a segment, then it is on the perpendicular bisector of the segment. This is due to the fact because since this bisects that line segment in the middle, and since this is of course equidistant, it's going to eventually land on there because this is always going to be the same distance from each other. So, the fourth, I mean the third one, is going to be stated along when we're doing this thing with Bob. So, question 28. It states that archaeologists find three stones. They believe that the stones were once part of a circle of stones with the community fire pit at its center. They mark the locations of stones A, B, and C on a graph where distances are measured in feet. For part A, we have to explain how the archaeologist can use a sketch to estimate the center of the circle of stones. And then for the part B, of course, we have to copy the diagram and find the approximate coordinates of the point at which the, archaeolo in which the archaeologist should look for the fire pit. So it's going to be in the middle somewhere. So for the question A, uh, really there's not much work you have to do for it. It's all about applying a theorem, which this is the theorem I didn't mention, but I'm mentioning it right now, which is uh, theorem 5.4, and it deals with the concurrency of perpendicular bisectors of a triangle. And this basically states that the perpendicular bisectors of a triangle intersect at a point that is equidistant from the vertices of the triangle. So, for example, if PDF, I mean, my, my bad, if line, <laughs> line segment PD, PE, and PF are, bisect, are perpendicular bisectors, then P, A, P, B, and P, C are going to be equal to this one. So basically, um, since these are perpendicular bisectors and they do intersect at each uh, line segment of the, this triangle, it's going to eventually end up giving you this center point, which is going to bring you to the center of the triangle, if that makes any sense. So basically, by applying this theorem, we can use the perpendicular bisectors on each side of the triangle, knowing that they are equidistant from each other. And as soon as these bisectors intersect each other, which will form a point, it will give us, or the archaeologists, an idea of where this center is from the stone circle, which it's a triangle, but they call it a circle, but who am I to judge? So. Into part B, we have to, of course, copy the diagram, find the approximate coordinates of the point, you know, so yada yada. So basically, I already have it copied down, and I already formed the little triangle because it's going to help us find the perpendicular bisectors and so forth and so on. So, since we are trying to find the perpendicular bisector, uh, since we know that 
the midpoint is the middle of these uh, of a line segment, we're gonna use the midpoint formula, which is x1 plus x2 over 2, and then comma because there's gonna be a point. Uh, y1 plus y2 over 2. So for AC, what you're gonna do, you're gonna do my 2 plus 6, divide that by 2, and 10 plus 1 divide that by 2. This gets you 4, comma, and this will get you 5.5. .5. So we know that this midpoint is located right there. For line segment AB, it's going to be 2 plus 13, divide that by 2, comma, 10 plus 6, divide that by 2. And this is going to get you 7.5, comma, 8 after doing of course everything. So then five, go all the way up to eight, which is gonna be right there. The line's a bit off, but I didn't have an actual ruler. So BC for the line segment is gonna be 13 plus six, divide that by two, my pen would work. Six. Okay, my pen has stopped working. Anyway, it's gonna be six plus one, Divide that by 2, which is going to get you 9.5, comma, 3.5. Oh, my Lord. So, basically, this one's going to be located right here. After doing that math, and the pen sucks. So, after doing that, what you're going to do is just draw a 90-degree angle line, if that makes sense. Uh, out and you're gonna do that until all three of the lines intersect and once doing that it should intersect that coordinates well the coordinate uh, 7 7 basically for X and Y and that basically solves this thing with Bob with a question so have a nice day good luck